What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video, I wanted to show you guys one of the newest lasers I added to my collection. Um, it took me a long time to finally get my hands on one of these. They're pretty old, and there's like almost none of them in existence. It's the Wicked Lasers Spider 2 BX 473 nanometer. So the Spider 2 models came before all the Spider 3s, like the Arctics, the Kryptons, the Infernos, and the Lunars. The Spider 2 generation only came in two different variants, the BX, which was 473 nanometer blue, and the GX, which was 532 nanometer green. And these lasers carried, when they came out, a huge price tag on them of, I think, around something like sixteen or $1,700. And this was back in like 2007, 2008. They've been long discontinued since, and they didn't run very long when they were in production because it wasn't too long after that the Spider 3s came out for significantly lower um, cost. So there's not many of these Spider 2s in existence, which is why it was sought after for me to add to my collection. Now the Spider 2 I have here is even more rare because it appears to be a very early production model, um, very early generation. You'll be able to tell because on the top of the laser, it doesn't have the standard little glass lens that most of the Spider 2s have, and it also doesn't have the safety key towards the bottom of the laser. And both of these little clips I'm showing you guys here are from another user that uploaded a video of his Spider BX, and there's like virtually no videos of the Spider 2 in the blue variant on YouTube. This is like the only other video I could come across, but as well as the, those little differences, Mine also has like a little serial number that starts with an A and his starts with a B and all the other ones I've seen start with a B so mine is like a first generation early generation model which makes it even more rare because most of the ones you see out there are the second generation the typical ones that start with a B and have the little glass lens on the top. But anyways if you wanted to find some of the technical information on this laser they still have the product page up on the Wicked Lasers website. After all these years, you can still access the link. And it just says discontinued, but it'll give you all the technical specs of the Spider 2s, both the green one and the blue one. And the blue one is rated at between 15 and 30 milliwatts. And it's, it's a simple laser, just push on, push off. The button's right on the bottom. It takes one 18650 battery, and it just has one single mode. And there's supposed to be a little yellow indicator light on the side of the laser that turns on when the laser is on and turns off when it's off, but unfortunately the indicator light on mine does not work. So this video right here is not necessarily a review because this product is so old and it's in used condition and like I said, one part, the LED indicator light doesn't work so it's not really in new condition by any means. I really just wanted to make this video to show you guys this laser because this is a laser that is, like I said, very hard to come across and I wanted to um, sh shed some light on it because it's one of the earlier 473s. This was back when the 473 DPSS color was in its infancy somewhat as far as handheld pointers go. So that's why this laser holds a lot of value to me and it's very unique and something that I enjoy because it's back when this handheld technology for this specific color was still very young and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in some different lighting levels here so this is gonna be a dimly lit indoor setting here and the dot is very bright and if you look directly down the axis of the laser you can actually see the beam a little bit too um, it has a very very good amount of brightness for a laser that's only rated to be 15 to 30 milliwatts and I am gonna do an LPM test later on in this video but the color is also very satisfying. I love the 473 compared to the 445. It's more of an aqua blue with a very, very tiny hint of green to it. And moving on to an outdoor setting, obviously you're not going to get any beam visibility. The dot is visible and if you keep your eye on it, you can spot it from up to 100, 200, several hundred feet away. You can still see it. It is very bright outdoors. And moving on to a nighttime setting, again the dot is very bright and the beam is visible when looking down the axis of the laser. It's not really that visible when you're holding the laser sideways. Um, you do kind of have to look down the sight of the laser to see the beam very well, but it is still very bright at night and it will travel long distances. And this dot is very tight too, there's not a whole lot of divergence to this one, which is very nice. It's a very fine little circular dot. 
and one other thing I wanted to show you guys that I'm noticing with this laser is that it's like very unstable it's like one of the most unstable lasers I've had you can see it kind of fluctuating in power and brightness and it's not turning off completely but it's definitely making noticeable um, fluctuations between different modes here and it's not a huge issue with me I mean the laser is staying on if it was fluctuating to the point where it was nearly turning off that would be one thing but I did kind of expect to see stuff like this because I have um, heard from others about this kind of behavior and you do have to understand that this is also like I said some of the very early technology as far as portable 473s go so this technology was still kind of in its infancy and the delicate delicate little GPSS crystals in there um, they put out different outputs as they heat up and cool down so it's definitely a very variable output that I'm getting here but it is steady in the fact that it stays bright it doesn't dip down to um, almost being off completely I am going to show you guys some LPM tests now and I have five separate tests for you guys on two different days here because like I said this thing's super variable and on one day it'll do one thing and on another day it'll do another thing so I did five separate tests on two different days and I'm gonna speed them all up for you guys but basically what I got for my general results was a power rating between 5 and 12 milliwatts with 5 being the average lowest and 12 being the peak I was able to reach um, on most days it sat around like somewhere between 6 to 8 and once I had it warmed up on some days I was able to peak close to 10 or 11 but that just shows that it is a little bit under spec compared to what it's supposed to be when they originally sold these they were rated at 15 to 30 milliwatts and maybe this was 15 milliwatts when it was first um, first produced and because this laser is now 10 years old it is putting out a slightly lower power output but the outputs not horrible what you will notice is that it does not hold one output at all with that variable um, brightness and power output you're seeing that it will climb up and then it'll start slowing down and going back down towards five and this is what the original safety label looked like on these things now I had to scour eBay to get mine because like I said these things are super rare so I don't have any safety label I don't have any of the original packaging or instructions I just have the laser itself but they stuck a label on here that said less than 500 milliwatts which doesn't really give you a whole lot of information but they were rated at 15 to 30 milliwatts originally and I believe I said earlier in the video that these were made in 2007 2008 um, they might have been 2008 2009 I'm not sure on that timeline but somewhere between 2007 and 2009 so these are the amazing fog room shots that you can get with this laser um, and I'm going to show you guys a bunch of these while I talk about the laser itself, but this is where the laser looks the most incredible. You want to get a fog machine, you want to close the door in a room, you want to fill the room up with fog, and you will see some, some beautiful beam shots on this one. And something very, very interesting that I'm noticing here is that while it's mode hopping, it's actually hopped to a, a little dual, dual beam output mode here. You can see two little separate parallel beams right next to each other, so this thing's kind of all over the board as far as modes go but I I'm very glad I added this one to my collection it's kind of like a, a collector's piece for me because it's not something you're gonna come across very often and it was one of the very high ticket very um, very interesting laser items for its time when it came out it was something very interesting nowadays having 10 milliwatts at 473 is nothing to write home about Although having a 473 is still kind of like an exotic wavelength nowadays, but it's definitely not as exotic as it was back then when this laser was produced. This is definitely one I'm going to keep in my collection for a very long time, and I want to give a thanks to some of the members of Laser Pointer Forums. I had posted an article in there about um, some questions I had about this laser and if anybody had some information on it, and I was able to get a lot of very hel helpful information from them. So. If any of you guys are into the laser hobby and you're not on laser pointer forums, I would highly suggest that you go over there and make an account because you can speak with a lot of like-minded individuals and get a lot of um, a lot of great information about lasers. So I just wanted to show this one to you guys and give you my information on it and 
If you guys are into lasers at all, hit that subscribe button for a bunch more awesome laser videos just like this one. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.